Hey everyone, welcome to week two of our study sessions focused on matters of racial injustice. Thank you for being here and being a part of this. My name's Graham for anyone who might be jumping on for the first time. I'm one of the pastors at the heart and it's great to be with you. As we said from the outset, this is a conversation that we wanna be committed to over the long haul in a number of different ways. But it's been great just over these past couple of weeks to drill down a bit together into some of the specifics, to dig a little bit deeper and have some conversation with one another. I hope that last week was beneficial to you and to your group. Hopefully you had the chance to share some of your own perspective and, and maybe to hear some new ideas as well. Let's keep in mind the list that I ran down last week on how to discuss things that matter in a way that edifies one another and honors one another. We've heard some great stories already about how that's happening. So thank you for being with us in this conversation. It really does matter. We're gonna follow a similar format today as we did last week in that we'll watch a video together, take in some video content, and then I'll come back around with some discussion questions and some ideas, some conversation starters, just to help aid in, in conversation for the groups this week. But the video that we're gonna to watch together is an interview with Latasha Morrison. And Latasha is a Christian speaker and author. She is also the founder and president of an organization called Be The Bridge, which you might be familiar with already. I know a number of people at the heart have engaged with Be The Bridge in different ways, but Latasha, as she'll tell us a little bit about on the video, she had attended a lot of different workshops and conferences that discussed matters of race and of inequality, and she found those to be really beneficial and helpful spaces, but she felt like it was lost in translation when it came to the everyday, one-on-one -on -one conversations at home, at work, at school, whatever it might be, and she wanted to step into that gap and help equip people to have those everyday conversations. And so Be The Bridge is committed to racial reconciliation, committed to racial equality. They have a presence across the US and they have a number of different resources, both online and in person, that have really aided in this whole overall effort. So Latasha will tell us a bit more about the organization, but she'll also share some perspectives and experience that I think is really valuable and that we can really learn from. So let's watch that video together and then I'll come back around with some questions for us. My guest today has been called a bridge builder, a reconciler. She's been voted by Ebony Magazine as one of, the, one of their power 100 people in 2017. Latasha Morrison, thanks for joining us on 100 uh, Huntley Street. Great. It's great to be here. So you started this group called Be The Bridge. Yes as a way to start and continue that conversation, yes. especially within the we church. We have to talk about it. And yeah. this is the thing, and you know, and the reason why I'm giving this history, you know, in this because history is so vital yeah. to what's happening now in the church, you know, why our church is segregated, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's because it's by design. Mm -hmm. We couldn't go to church with one another. Mm -hmm. Christians signed on with what the culture was doing as it relates to racism and said, you're not welcome. You're not an image bearer. Yeah. And we have to, we have to reconcile that, mm -hmm. you know, we have to talk about that, we, you know, and, and it still impacts us because look at our churches now. Yeah. They're very much segregated, yeah. you know, um, but that, you know, you know, when we think of scripture, you know, on earth as it is in heaven, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that will be done, mm -hmm. you know, on earth as it is in heaven. So we think about, we're not going to a surrogate <laughs> heaven, eternity. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot of stuff yeah. to get right. We got to have these conversations. We have to put on our big girl and big boy pants yeah. and be courageous and really face this ugliness. Mm -hmm. We're all a part of this. It's not about, you know, just white people fixing it. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's, we all have to come together yeah. in solidarity to fix this. And that's going to start with conversation. Conversation, but you have to really kind of get out of yourself, mm -hmm. you know, um, get out of your own personal biases and your prejudices and really start checking your heart and examining your heart and asking God to reveal those blind spots, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I'm sitting up here and I do this work and I have to fight this every day. Yeah. You know, I have to fight those blind spots or those um, personal prejudice or internalized racism that I may have mm -hmm. um, myself, you mm -hmm. know. And so I know if I'm having to do it, yeah. you know, in this racialized society um, other people are too so tell us about be the bridge and how that's continuing yeah. the conversation yeah. one of the things we never had um, really that I've never experienced in in the, the 
in um, the Christian world was the relational part. Mm -hmm. You know, we have these conversations, but we never take it outside of the conference mm -hmm. um, or outside of the event mm -hmm. um, where it follows us home. And so I wanted to create a conversation. And we, I just, this was just model me seeing um, 12 years a slave and all these different mm -hmm. things. And I wanted to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't want to talk about it with, you know, people who look like me. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about how, how, what do you think about yeah. this? And then realizing that a lot of times when it comes to movies, people don't see them, mm -hmm. you know, and I started this dialogue and um, met some friends, went to a conference, another conference that was beautiful and great, but it was so segregated. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk to the, um, to the creator of the conference and we became friends, which is Jenny Allen mm -hmm. and um, the founder of If Gathering. And um, she really um, wanted help with this. And so sometimes people don't do because they don't know, yeah. you know? And so starting this dialogue, um, you know, with them, and, and she brought some of her friends and we have another friend who um, did this work in restorative justice that brought that model into what the conversation we were having. And we just started having conversations mm -hmm. and it was really blessing them. And they started talking about it. And, you know, I kind of became the leader of it. And, you know, she's like, I want to model this. Can we create a guide to show other people how to do this. And that's how Be The Bridge started. Wow. It was my accidental ministry. I did not plan it. I didn't intend on it happening. But if you look at the threads of my life, mm. you know, all the way from, you know, middle school and high school, you can see what God was setting me up. And mm. I had no idea. I was just doing that next thing. But I'd always had a, a um, this consciousness about justice and righteousness. Mm. Even before I was a Christian, yeah. I, there was this, you know, about things being just, and you can see these patterns in my life, you know. I led the calls to get black history started in our high school, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we were probably about 12%, I think 13% um, people of color, mm -hmm. non-whites in, in my high school. Um, and just the tension with that, that's when I realized that we think differently, mm -hmm. you know, about things. And so... I think, you know, this conversation started organically with my life. Um, it's been a grassroots movement. Uh, we don't, you know, we would love for churches to use our guides and our curriculum, but we understand the barriers with that a lot of times. So we start with whoever's willing and listening. You know, whether that's a lay person, if you can start it in your church, great. But if you can start it near your community, your school, your neighborhood, with your friends, with yeah. your family, that's where you start. But start somewhere. Yeah. And that's what it's about. And that's how we've grown. And we're in, I think, every state except for like four people mm -hmm. start these. They're not chapters. Mm -hmm. So once someone starts a group, it's not like, oh, I can join this group, you know. Um, you know, at the end of their process, they're supposed to do this thing called reproduction. We use the mm -hmm. word reproduction versus multiplying, mm -hmm. but they're supposed to reproduce because this is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So then you connect other people who want to have the conversation so that they can start the conversation. And that's how Be The Bridge multiplies. And um, yeah. You use some key words, conversation and listening. Yeah. Those are two important words, especially in the conversation of race, yeah. because there can be so much tension that walls go up and defenses yeah. just arise yeah. and listening just goes out the window. Yeah. How important is that in this path of reconciliation? You cannot do it without listening, mm. you know? And one of our groups, we, ha we have a online group where people come to sometimes get um, education and get resources and to really start the conversation because maybe they have it, they don't have the opportunity to start an offline group. Mm -hmm. And so we have this, um, online conversation on Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's a private group, a secret group. Um, and we have questions that we have people answer before they come in. Mm -hmm. And then once they're in, we tell them, you cannot say a word, you cannot post mm -hmm. anything for three months. Mm -hmm. Your only role and responsibility is to listen. Mm -hmm. And you can read whether you disagree or not. You can read. Mm -hmm. You don't have to verbalize your disagreement. Yeah. You know? Um, and we give them a whole unit like of 
things to listen to, books to read in that three month process. Mm -hmm. And then they can engage the con con um, conversation. There's discipline in that, mm -hmm. especially if you're used to your voice always being heard yeah. and you're used to coming into a space. And sometimes, especially as a, um, a white person, you don't understand the power you know, the power dynamics and the power that you have in a room and in a space mm -hmm. that can really shut things down. Mm -hmm. And so this is the way, our way of kind of level leveling the playing field where, you know, you haven't been exposed to a lot of these mm -hmm. stories and experiences. And so you need that exposure. And so this is the opportunity to get exposed. And so, but that rule applies for everyone, mm -hmm. no matter your ethnicity, when you come into our group. And that has been healing for a lot of people because we hear stories of people saying, I hated that rule, but I realized that if I would have spoke, I would have misspoken and mm -hmm. I probably would have hurt someone. Mm -hmm. And that discipline of listening, you know, we think about that be still and know yeah. that I am God. I mean, that's a discipline, like listening is like a worship, yeah. you know? And I think some of that carries can carry over into our faith in that sense where we, you know, we have to be able to sit with mm. and understand pain and we have to understand we come from different cultural backgrounds. And my cultural background, there's a language, a theology for suffering mm. and for lament, mm. but in um, what, mostly white Western culture background, there's no language for sitting with. It's like, we gotta do, we gotta fix it, mm. we gotta solve it, you know, but not this rest mm. in our pain. And, and through that sitting and that suffering, you know, when you think about African-American history in America, you know, you have the birth of, you know, blues music, mm. gospel music, mm -hmm. all these different things that, that marry our suffering and our joy. Yeah. And, you know, and, it's, and there's something to learn. And I think a lot of times the history of the black church is the answer to a lot of things that we see missing in the whole faith. Because mm. we can't say that, you know, this is the whole faith of the, the, what the church is supposed to look like if the church is not represented of all the people that God created, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at our theology and our, our history and our theology, there were a lot of people missing in a lot of these discussions. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we really, and I think we have to sit with that and, and really say, okay, is this truly the fullness of the body of yeah. Christ? What is missing? Yeah. You know, we're all connected to one another. You know, if one part of the body mm -hmm. is rejoices, the other part rejoices with it. If one part suffers, the other part suffers with it. And I think we have to carry that and, um, and really sit in that and really begin to understand one another. And that's hard. Yeah. This so, is not easy. <laughs> no. So when you ask that question, my question is then becomes, is there hope yeah. for the church to find a place of some yeah. sort of reconciliation when it comes to race? Yeah. There's always hope. Mm. You know, our faith tells us there's hope mm. because we know that even on the other side of earth, you know, in this life, there's eternity. Mm. So that gives us hope, mm. you know. Um, but I do, but I believe in, um, in people. I know that everyone's not going to change. And my, my job is not to convince someone of anything. Mm -hmm. So if someone says, I don't believe anything you said, mm. And I'm totally against it. And, you know, and you need to be quiet. You, okay, then you move on. Then I'm not talking to you. Mm. I'm talking to this person. You yeah. know? And so it's not, I'm not going to argue against yeah. someone because th that's their belief system. I don't transform lives. Yeah. That's for the Holy Spirit. That's to do. Jesus. That's, that's Jesus. Jesus. And so I cannot do that. And so I'm not going to waste my time with trying to convince someone that mm. something is broken. Mm. Our work and Be the Bridge is for people who are aware that something is broken mm -hmm. and they want to be a part of the resolution where most people, they say, I see it, I don't understand it, but I want to be a part of the resolution. I want to be in this. Like, I sense this, you know. Those are the people that are attracted to Be the Bridge. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not trying to argue whether something is a justice issue or something is a righteous. We're not trying to do all those things, you know, understanding that this, you know, is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's not a movement. 
you know, Be The Bridge is not a movement. It's a lifestyle. Mm. I feel like it's something that I will be doing until I take my last breath. Mm. And so that's what I'm calling people into. Yeah. I'm calling people in to see, um, to have, you know, you know, this understanding of that kingdom come that will be done on earth mm -hmm. as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. And we understand if we're looking at this, if we're thinking that we're going to a segregated heaven, if we're thinking that we're going to a heaven where one country is better than the other and we're, you know, you know, this country is great, this country. I mean, what if if America is the apple of God's eye, then what does that say about Brazil? What does mm -hmm. that say about Canada? That's not even kingdom mindset. Mm -hmm. And, but we, we've allowed that stuff to penetrate, penetrate into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And we really have to start having these tough conversations to really remove those things and really start getting God's eyes in how we see each other mm -hmm. and how we're called to love each other. So, oh, thank yeah. you so much, Latasha, for your yeah. time. Thank you for being a bridge builder. Thank you so much for having me. It's great. All right. So some really good and challenging content there from Latasha. Let me throw out a few questions, discussion points to help us unpack some of this content a little bit. Early on, Latasha talks a little bit about segregation within the church and maybe especially on a Sunday morning. She talked about the historical context where that was by design and that now, even though that is hopefully no longer the case anywhere, we still see a decent amount of segregation on a Sunday morning in particular. So my question for you would be, do we see that as a problem? And if it is a problem, then what practical steps can we take to help move the needle in the opposite direction a little bit about Sunday mornings, but just within the life of the church in general? I also love the point that Latasha made about how reconciliation is not possible without listening, without the skill of listening well. And I love the practice that they have within Be The Bridge and the Be The Bridge Facebook group where newcomers, people who are joining in for the first time have to listen for three months before they can contribute to the conversation so that they develop that skill, they develop the discipline of listening because it is a discipline for sure. So my question here would be, how can we listen better to one another? How can we listen better to different racial and ethnic groups than our own? How can we listen better to different demographics in general? And how might introducing the skill of listening really well affect this whole conversation about race. And the last question that came to mind for me as I was watching this content was to do with this whole area that Latasha describes towards the end of the video where the black community has learned how to marry joy and sorrow together and how to carry both of them how to live in the tension of that. She talked a little bit about the jazz movement and the blues movement and others that, that have come from that space. But she contrasts it to the white community that she sees still trying to avoid pain and suffering and sorrow at all costs. So do we think that that's a fair overall assessment? Where is it true? Where is it not true? And if there is a bit of a contrast, then to what extent does that hinder our conversation about race? Does it hinder it? How might it aid the conversation to be aware of some of those dynamics? I think that's worthy of a little bit of discussion as well. I love the fact that Latasha ends on a note of hope. I think that there is hope to be found in this conversation, yes, because of our eternal hope, and also because in the here and now, because of people like Latasha and others who are committed to moving us forward in these areas. So we have reason to be hopeful. I'm hopeful 
because we're sitting here discussing this stuff now. And again, we're, we're grateful for your participation in this. And let's be committed, like we've said, to this conversation over the long haul. This is not a two week endeavor. This is in many ways a lifelong endeavor. So let's commit ourselves to that. And as you have this discussion and others like it, know that we are always here as well. The staff and others at the heart are here to continue this conversation with you because we need to be in this stuff together. We need to be able to have conversations about things that matter. We're with you in this. So thank you for being a part of this. It's been great to be with you. Take care. Mm -hmm.